So the time has come. We are less than a couple of hours away from the beginning of the 2023 NFL Draft. It is an exciting time every year. Like when you're football fans, this is one of the things, especially for us hardcores, this is one of the things we enjoy the most. Basically a human meat market. It is what it is, right? And what I find interesting about this year, and I especially find this to be true the more I have studied and evaluated prospects in my own way, my own opinions here, it stands out to me is that the top of this draft is not great. The real value, the real value of this draft is rounds two through four. As a result, I think you're seeing a reflection of the rumors, and usually the rumors start to be crazy and fly all over the place. But it feels like even more so this year. Because you've got four quarterbacks that could go very high, but only maybe one of them goes in the expected slot, and one or two or all three of the other quarterbacks could drop. Hard to know. You've got a massively talented but big risk defensive lineman that some teams think is the best player in the draft, best defensive player in the draft, generational type of talent. They're crazy, but whatever. But hard to project his range, right? Yeah, it certainly is. And then, you know, I was fully prepared. I had started working on this mock Wednesday. And I was fully ready to have Tyree Wilson go number two to the Houston Texans. And then the reports of the foot problems lingering and some teams having concerns about that, some teams reportedly even removing them from the draft board entirely. Does that make any sense to anybody? If a guy is a top five or 10 talent otherwise, but you think, hey, he might have some foot problems. Doesn't it seem really excessive to completely entirely remove him from your damn draft board? I, I can understand. Not as comfortable with what you see. You're not as comfortable with what he's got. You worry about the x-rays or the medicals. And maybe you drop him down some. But to take him from top five on your board, top ten on your board, to completely off the board? Seems psycho for a foot. Even though, you know, foot injuries can be scary for sure. As a result... I had trouble figuring out where he's going to go because I still have to believe somebody's going to swing on the upside in round one. But is it going to be in the top 10? Is it going to be the top half of the draft? You know, somewhere between 20 to 25? Or is it going to be at the very bottom? You know, so I could fully expect that I will be way off the mark in terms of where Tyree Wilson's draft stock lands him on Thursday night. And as far as this mock draft goes, I will tell you in full transparency, I don't know what the fuck to think. Real talk. I think most all of us are in alignment, unless the Panthers have trolled everybody, that Bryce Young, the quarterback from Alabama, is going to be the number one overall pick in this draft. It feels like the pretty safe assumption at this point. That much we know. But then you got the Texans there at two. And is it going to be Tyree Wilson? Is it going to be Will Anderson? Is it going to be C.J. Stroud? You started to see some late money action around Will Levis being the guy at two, whether it be the Texans or somebody else. I slated them with Will Anderson because he feels like for them the safe pick wouldn't be my pick. But if the Texans really go into this draft, and the way I've got it mocked here, I've got them take Will Anderson at two and Jackson Smith and Najigba at 12. And think of the Najigba piece you know, not even so much just being a reflection of the Texas taking them, but that's the estimated draft range that I could see a team wanting the Jigba is right there. Again, don't agree with it. I don't like I don't like the way a lot of the top of this draft shakes out. And I may very well end up being wrong, but um yeah, like I find myself in vast disalign misalignment from others. But the Texas though, if they really do pass on a quarterback in this first round, they're just stupid. If there was ever a quarter or ever a draft where you were going to find it appropriate to maybe even reach a little bit for a quarterback, swing for the fences for a quarterback, this is it. Because the top of this draft is not great. This is the draft to swing on these quarterbacks. And if they go and they draft Will Anderson at number two. I have to ask D'Amico Ryan, I know he's not the ultimate shot caller, but he's obviously going to have significant influence. 
I'm going to say, what the fuck is wrong with you? Oh, you got your Nick Bosa. Will Anderson is not Nick Bosa. Furthermore, you come from a situation in San Francisco where you understand the importance of the quarterback position. And you're potentially in a spot here at number two where unlike what the 49ers were, the team gave up a ton to go up a couple years ago and get Trey Lance, you could sit there and take a guy at two. Even if you have one of these other positional prospects rated slightly ahead of the quarterback, ding dong dum dicks, take the fucking quarterback. Because if you get it right, it changes the trajectory of your franchise for a long time to come. And if you don't, then you could try it again in a couple of years. You say, well, it might get the GM and the coach fired. Well, drafting Will Anderson and passing on quarterback for another year might do that too. Unbelievable. So again, in full transparency, if we believe a lot of the reports we're seeing about Will Anderson going to, then the draft starts at number three with Arizona. And I've got Tennessee trading up to three which to me makes sense. They need a quarterback. They're not going anywhere until they get a quarterback. They got to find a young one to try and build around. Go up to three if Houston doesn't take one at two and you can have your pick of the litter. Whether you want C.J. Stroud, Will Levis, Anthony Richardson, they would all be there at that point theoretically. Go get one. Jump the Colts. Get your guy. Make sure you get your guy. That would be smart for them and frankly smart for the Cardinals. Because on the Cardinals, you know, where your needs might line and the value of the board, they don't perfectly align. So you saw some reports come out like, hey, the Cardinals might be prepared to take Paris Johnson Jr. at three. I've got him being able to trade back to 11 and take him in this draft. But again, there's so much uncertainty here. I've got quarterbacks slated at three, four, and five. That feels incredibly unlikely. But I don't fucking know what to make of this draft. If Jalen Carter's conditioning was better and his play was more consistent and the off the field shit wasn't there he probably would be a top five pick he'd probably go to seattle at five and he still may again really hard to assess this here and i'm not just trying to hedge my bets and make a bunch of excuses i'm just expressing like the challenges here but also kind of the excitement because it does feel a little less predictable this year one of the few picks that feels very predictable, almost to the point where you feel like it's not going to happen, is pick six, Detroit, and Devin Weatherspoon. That one has been interesting because it sure feels like that's where they're going. And you could certainly see where he would be a Dan Campbell type of player, a Lions type of player. But then I would say maybe Jalen Carter would make a ton of sense for them, especially in the defensive line with Hutchinson in Houston. You know, that could be scary. And at least in Detroit, Carter wouldn't have to be the primary guy. He could be a secondary option and, you know, not have as much pressure on him. So Carter could go there, and then you might see the defensive backs go 7-8. and eight. I'm assuming both Witherspoon and Gonzalez go in one order or the other, run, one right after the other pretty much, and somewhere in the top 7-8 to eight picks. That feels pretty safe. But again, stranger shit has happened. Don't know what's happening fully with Jalen Carter. Don't know what's happening with Tyree Wilson. Hard to know what the hell is going to happen with these quarterbacks. If one of these quarterbacks is going to fall, it's probably going to be, you know, well, I can't even say that anymore because, you know, concerns about the one test that C.J. Stroud reportedly didn't do well on. So could he be the one that drops the most because he doesn't have the same physical upside of Richardson and Levis? Who the fuck knows? You know, there's been a lot of talk about where will B. John Robinson go, and I look at the Falcons and say, you know, that's the type of team that would do something squirrelier because if both of the corners were gone and they weren't 100% convinced that Jalen Carter was the right guy for them, none of the quarterbacks are there at that point, where else would they go? You say offensive line? Well, at this point in time, they probably would look at a guy they might have on the top of their draft board in B. John Robinson and take him because they love to run the ball in Arthur Smith's system down there in Atlanta. It is certainly possible. It would feel funky to say three straight years they drafted a skill player in the first round, Kyle Pitts, Drake London, and now B. John Robinson, but that shit's possible. And then we get to the Bears. And you can say, well, maybe you're trying to put the Jeff Jinks on this by saying Jalen Carter would get taken by the Bears, therefore that means it won't happen. I can neither confirm or deny those rumors. However, what I will say is this. Would this be my choice? Absolutely fucking lutely not. Do I think Jalen Carter is overrated? I absolutely goddamn do. 
Do I still think he is a first round talent in this draft? Yes, I do. Would I consider this a steal to get him at nine? Absolutely not. It would be a bit of a reach, not a massive reach, nor would this be the pick that would piss me off the most. If they took somebody like T-Rex Skaronsky or freaking Lucas Van Ness, then yeah, I'm going to lose my freaking shit. Or if they took B. John Robinson at nine, I would lose my damn shit. Jalen Carter pick would annoy me and worry me. I could somewhat understand it. However, it would be, you're in a spot, top 10 pick. What do you do? Do you help your young quarterback or do you draft a risky defensive lineman? Bears football says build the defense. As I go through the rest of this mock, what stands out to me is the talent in this class in a couple of positions. Because a couple of these positions are really good at the top. First, I'm going to talk about tight ends. This is a really good tight end class at the top, you know, five to six deep. Yeah, we could have four tight ends go in round one. I've got Kincaid going 16 to the Commanders. I've got Meyer going 21 uh, to the Chargers, Salary Chase Oliver. And then I've got Darnell Washington going 26 to the Cowboys. How about, you know, Sam Laporta could slide in there to the back end of round one. Hard to know. But a good class at the top. This corner class is really good. I'd expect five, maybe six corners to go in round as a safety, so I'm not counting him in that mix. But those classes are good. The edge class to me is also pretty damn good and only gets better as you get to rounds two through four. This is a great edge class. Not so great the interior, which is why I've got Kalijah Kansi, even with his shorter arms, you know, going in the top 20, in this case, going 18 to Detroit. Because they have the double up on their defense. Um, but that going on, you could take a look at this one round mock. It's all I had time to do. Like I said, take it with a grain of salt. The draft feels like it's going to be incredibly unpredictable. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch tonight. I'll grant you that. But, you know, I expect maybe I've got a number of the players in their right range, you know, with a variance of maybe... Uh, two to four picks. You know, there's always a couple that will surprise you. A couple of what the hell are they doing type of picks every year, especially towards the bottom of round one. But, you know, directionally, I don't feel too bad about it. I just don't anticipate that I'll get a lot of the actual team and player picks right this year. 